Please be aware that the comments, views, opinions shared on this podcast are not meant to diagnose a medical problem and or legal problem. If you do have a medical problem or legal problem, kindly contact a professional. Welcome to An Apple A Day, a podcast, a resource, a community. Share your experiences and learn from others as we overcome barriers and learn to live a happy, healthy life with a disability. Welcome to the community. Here's your host, Jimmy Apple. Hello, my friends. This is Jimmy Apple. I'm your host for an Apple a Day podcast. Today, though, we're not bringing you the whole podcast. We're just bringing you a little bit, a bite, a taste, a slice of the apple. An Apple a Day podcast, as well as this slice, is brought to you by www.famousapple.com. Famousapple.com is the website for an Apple a Day podcast. There you're going to find connections to our Twitter feed, to our Facebook pages. You're going to be able to access the members-only message boards, the members-only chat rooms, all free to members of the website and this podcast. So how you doing today, my friends? You feeling good? Feeling strong? Feeling better than you did yesterday? You taking your medications the way the doctor writes it? You doing your exercises the way the therapist told you? Excellent. Hey, did you catch last week's show? Pocono Mountains? Beautiful place. Absolutely gorgeous. Plenty of things to do in the Poconos. I'll tell you what, when I first visited there, I liked it so much... I moved there. That's right. I went there at first. I rented a house, make sure I liked it. I I was planning on renting for a year or two. I rented for six months and I decided I loved it there. So I went out and I looked and I actually bought a house. And let me tell you, I know that sounds like, wow, he must have money. No, go look at some of the prices in the Poconos. Prices in the Poconos are very reasonable. They're on their way back. They're bouncing back from a recession that they were in. So now's the time. If you're going to buy in the Poconos, now's the time to do it. But I did it. That's right. And I liked it so much that I said, I'm not going to wait. Why am I going to throw money away on rent when I couldn't put money away for something I own? So I ended up buying a house in the Poconos. And you're not going to believe me when I tell you, but it was five bedrooms, three full baths, a living room, a dining room, a kitchen, a front deck. The property itself sat on four acres of land. I paid $95,000 for it. And the taxes there were less than $1,000. i am telling you, how can you go wrong, right? So I lived there. I I lived in the Poconos for, oh, 18 years. This first house I bought, I had that for 13 years. And I liked it so much that I built a brand new house in in another part of the Poconos. And there was reasons for that, you know, family reasons and stuff. But I love the Poconos. I think there's really no place like it. You have everything there from swimming to skiing. You have winter, spring, summer, fall. You have all the seasons. There's nothing like sitting around a fireplace with the snow falling outside on Christmas Eve. It's a regular Hallmark card, a Norman Rockwell painting. That's what the Poconos meant to me. But anyway, it's a great place to vacation. And if you go up there and look, right now, you can actually buy houses in the Poconos for less than $50,000 in places. That's right. Some places you're going to spend sixty, seventy thousand. If you spend more than a hundred thousand dollars in the Poconos right now, you've got a mansion. That's right. <laughs> so that's something to something to think about. You know, go up there, go on vacation, take a look at some of the properties that are available. They have golf courses like you wouldn't believe. It's amazing. But anyway, we also spoke last week about fibromyalgia. That's the one of those invisible diseases, and what a terrible, terrible disease. Now. I just, I, I feel like I have to be honest here with, with everybody. After all, we are friends, right? I've been having a bit of a medical problem. It's been coming on for the last several months. Out of nowhere, over the last few months, I began falling for absolutely no reason whatsoever. I've been having blackouts, and they come at the most inopportune times. I mean, here I am. I sit in a wheelchair 99.9% of my day, and the time I get to stand up, I black out and I fall down. <laughs> I know, I know it sounds stupid, but it's the truth. And it started, but it started happening to me a, a while ago. It was last fall. Actually, I was leaving my house. I had an appointment with a cardiologist and I was meeting my wife there. That morning, she had put my wheelchair in the back of the van because I have a hard time getting, I can get to the van, I can drive the van, but getting my wheelchair in and out on my own is, is kind of difficult. So she put it in there that morning and I had a little transport chair in the, in the house that I could use to get around. And uh, I was going out, I all dressed, and I'm 
getting ready. I go go into the doctor. So I come out on my crutches and I start going down the ramp. Now I have done this a thousand times before. Never had a problem. I get halfway down the ramp and it was a beautiful day out. Oh, sun was shining. It was the fall, but it was like one of those Indian summer days where it was beautiful out. You didn't need a jacket, really, anything. So I'm making my way down the ramp and all of a sudden, the next thing I know, I'm laying on the on the walkway. I fell off the ramp and down onto the walkway. And I've got blood here and there and I didn't know whether I hit my head or not. And all I know is I'm I was hurting. I was really hurting, and the thing was, my crutches went one way, and I went the other. So here I'm, I'm stuck on the floor, and I just have to get my bearings because, like I said, I just fell. I fell from like three and a half feet up onto rocks and rocks and stone, and um, so I'm not feel, I'm not feeling the best. So I'm just laying there on the floor a minute, trying to get my bearings. You want to hear something pitiful? Here I am, one-legged guy. I'm laying on the floor, looking up at the trees above me, and here comes my neighbor. They pass right by. Now, it's not like you can't see me from the street. I'm right there. I'm out in front. But they pass right by. You think they stop? Nope. Then I see another car go by. They go by nice and slow. Do you think they stop? No. So they must have thought, here's this one-legged little fat guy laying on the floor, (laughs) getting a suntan in the middle of the afternoon in fall. I just couldn't believe it. But that's another story. Anyway, I finally get my bearings. I, I see where I'm at. I can't get to my crutches. So... I kind of scoot my way back over towards the ramp and scoot my butt up the ramp and swing my legs over the side. So now at least I'm in a sitting position. I call my wife on my cell phone and tell her what happens. And anyway, make a big to do about it. I go to. The, I ended up getting to my cardiologist. I got there late, and they were like a little bit perturbed that I got there late, believe it or not. But I explained what happened, and anyway, I go there, and I'm really not feeling good. And my wife kept on saying, "Do you want to go to the hospital? You want to go?" To-? No, I don't want to go. But make a long story short, I ended up at the hospital that night. They kept me overnight, ran some tests, see if I had another stroke or something like that. Anyway, we continue on. Went about three weeks, no no incidents. I'm coming home one day after driving my wife to work, and I had left my wheelchair in the driveway. So I went to get out of the van. I went over to get in my wheelchair, and I've done this a million times. As I'm turning around and putting... I'm holding onto the wheelchair with one hand, putting my crutches against the van with the other, and all of a sudden everything goes black, and next thing I know, I'm on the floor, the garbage pail is laying down next to me, my chair is tipped over, and my my back, oh my shoulder is killing me. And I had fallen against the, the garage door and bounced onto the floor and hit the garbage pail. It was a mess. And again, I ended up at the hospital. And again, they ran these tests and they can't figure out what it is. They just make note that I blacked out. They ran the CT scans, all that stuff. All right, to make a long story short, this happened several times after that. One time one time in the house, I was in the shower, getting out of the shower. I was refreshed. I was, oh, felt great. I had a shower. Bam, I'm on the floor. Coming into the house this one day, my wife, I drove my wife over to pick up her car from the mechanic in the morning. So I said to her, you go straight to work from there and I'm going to go home. She goes, I'd rather make sure you get in the house okay. I said, all right, Uh, it's a waste of time, but okay. So we come home and she's getting stuff out of the van, putting it into her car. And I said, I'm going to go open the door. She's like, all right, take it easy. Wait for me. I'll be right there. I got up onto my front step onto the little porch that I have out in front of my house. Bam, right off the side of the porch. I'm laying in in the decorative stone on the ground. Well, I couldn't move. I was disoriented. Next thing I know, I'm back in the hospital. And again, they run all these tests. They can't find out what's going on with me. I get released. I go home. It was three weeks later. I go to my sister-in-law's house closer to the city. And she has the same thing in front of her house, a little platform. It's like your front porch, and then you step up a couple of steps into the house. So I get up on the front. I'm going to get up on the platform there. And my sister-in-law says, well, you go first. I said, you go first. She goes, you're going to be okay. I said, I'm a professional. Don't try this at home. So she laughs. She goes up ahead of me. I go up. Next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor in her walkway there. I bounced off the house. I broke their downspout. But this was the worst for me. That one was the worst one because I had no idea where I was there for about, uh, it's probably only about 20 seconds, but it felt like 20 hours. I had no idea where I was. And I remember saying to my wife, I said, this was a bad one. And I just couldn't move. I couldn't move my head. I couldn't move my neck. I was just like stuck in that one position. It felt like for hours, but it was only for seconds. 
And again, though, I couldn't get up, but I just had to get my my wits about me. I I was unclear where I really was, to be honest. And she says, uh, we're going to have to take you to the hospital. I said, I'm not going to the hospital here. I said, it's Sunday. I don't want to get stuck here. So I'll go to the doctor tomorrow. Make a long story short, I'll go to the doctor tomorrow. She says, we can't figure out what's going on. We've got all these tests. Can't figure out. It's continuing to happen. So what we're going to have to do is I'm going to send you to a specialist. And I get there, and the next thing I know, they're testing me for epilepsy. Epilepsy. I've never had epilepsy in my life, but this is what they're testing me for. So then they said, well, it's possibly sleep apnea. It might have something to do with your cardiac condition. You know, there's a whole bunch of ifs, what it could be. So she says, I'm going to see about getting you into this unit in the hospital. It's called an epilepsy monitoring unit. I was beside myself. I mean, all of a sudden, this became real. You're thinking I might have epilepsy? Or she says, well, no, not just that. It could be sleep apnea. It could be cardiac related. It could be a whole bunch of things. But I want to get you in there because we have to check this out because you're blacking out. It could be my mild seizures. Okay. You know, I'll do whatever the doctor tells me to. So I just wanted to let you know. And starting tomorrow, I'm going to be in the epilepsy monitoring unit, the EMU, as they call it. I'm going to be there for a week and find out what's actually going on with me. And I just wanted to let you know in case you do write. I mean, I've gotten several letters and I answered them right away when I get them. I don't know how much access I'm going to have in the hospital. I'm going to try my best. But if I don't answer you right away, that's the reason why. But am I nervous? Yes. I mean, anyone that says they wouldn't be nervous is foolish. But I still keep in mind, too, things can always be worse. There's, I said it last week. There's always someone else striving to get to where you're at. So there's people in a lot worse condition than I am. But it's just a little bit nerve-wracking, I guess is a good word for it, to, to have to go through this for a week. And then you got to deal with the morons. <laughs> There's always morons, right? I got a friend of mine. This is a very good friend of mine, actually. And, you know, we were talking and I said, yeah, I'm a little bit concerned about all of this. You know, something new every time. And he said, ah, so what? You go to the hospital, you're on vacation. He says, what are you doing? You, you're going to either sit around at home or sit around in the hospital. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is that what you think I do? You think I just sit around? Tell me. Tell me, friends, is that or is that not insulting? You know, as well as I know, we don't just sit around. We, we're not we're not lumps on a log. We're not pieces of furniture. We have feelings. We have thoughts. We do things. And for people to have that attitude, I that just, it, it irritates me to no end. But I'll deal with that when I come back. But I just want to let you know, in case you do write, that I'm not ignoring you. And I wanted to make sure that you have a really good week. I'm going to have, uh, hopefully... A show in the books for Friday to be released on Friday. So please check out the show on Friday. And I will definitely be talking to you as soon as I get home. All right. So have a great week, my friends. Feel better. Feel stronger. And remember, things can always be worse. I'll talk to you in a week. My name is Jimmy Apple. Have a good one. Thanks for listening to An Apple a Day with Jimmy Apple. Your gateway to a happy, healthy life. Join our community at www.famousapple.com. See you next time.